let's appreciate him let's honor him let's adore him thank you master in the name of Jesus lift your right hand as well and ask the Lord to speak to you this morning to speak to you this morning to speak to you this morning blessed be your name honor to your name adoration to your name worship to your name thank you master and thank you master and thank you master in Jesus precious name father thank you for the privilege of your presence breathe upon your word this morning let no one live here the same even cases that have not been mentioned that the people came here with let it be absolutely healed thank you Lord in Jesus precious name give the Lord a big clap of hand please be seated I'd like to welcome everyone here today to our church for the, especially those who are here for the first time welcome to the glory dome today we have the men of the learned profession the legal profession and women in our midst senior members of the bench and senior members of the bar and um, paralegal professionals very soon will be Praying is a day of prayer for this profession, for the judiciary and the legal practice in Nigeria to pray specifically for them. By the time the message is over, we will be receiving them and praying for them and trusting the Lord to do something new in our nation, in that realm. If you believe that, say loud, Amen. The God who made that girl to walk like magic. You remember the girl that the car hit her house and went almost killed her just now and made all these ears to open just like that. That God is alive. He will help us in Nigeria. He will change our story in Nigeria. He will handle our difficulties in Nigeria. Shout the loudest amen. Very, very quickly, I'm speaking on the word the way of the blessing. The way of the blessing. Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 to 3. He said, and I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed the Lord bless his word in Jesus name our objective this morning is to understand what it takes to access the blessing of God. And by the time we come towards the end of the message, I will remind you that when we talk about the blessing of God, we are not just talking about financial or material resources. We'll look at that at the end. But what does it take to access the blessing of God? The Bible makes it clear that in Christ Jesus, we are potentially blessed. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us. For it is written cursed. Is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles. So we are potentially blessed in Christ. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. The Bible made it clear. It said blessed. Be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. He has blessed us. 
So the blessing potentially exists. But the fact is, not every child of God is walking in the reality of the blessing. It is like having possession or property willed to you that you can't access. What does it take to activate the blessing of God in our lives? What is the way of the blessing? I will look at seven of them very quickly. Number one is the way of uprightness. The way of uprightness. The way of uprightness is the way of blessedness. And the way of crookedness is the way of costfulness. How do I know? Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3. He said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of his comfort, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So, blessed is the man that is not walking in the, the counsel of the ungodly. In Psalm 5 verse 12, he said, the Lord will bless the righteous, not the unrighteous. Thou, Lord, will bless the righteous, not the crooked. Thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor will you compass him as with a shield. He will bless the righteous. In Psalm 24, verse 3, all the way to verse 5, he said, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He said, he that has clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity. He has not sworn deceitfully. That man shall receive the blessing from the Lord. The person who has not lifted his soul unto vanity. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord. Righteousness from the God of his salvation. The upright can not escape the blessing of God. And the crooked will never embrace the blessing of God. Why is it that there are so many people struggling today in many realms of life? Double deals, crooked dealings. They are praying to God at the same time doing dubious things. And God is saying, you can't ask my blessing on your crookedness. So if you are looking for the blessing of God, in Job chapter 1 from verse 1, he said there was a man in the land of us. This man was perfect. This man was upright. He feared God. He rejected evil. And that man was the greatest of the East, of all the men of the East. If you need the blessing... You need the way of uprightness. Number two is the way of divine guidance. The way of divine guidance is the way of the blessing. The way of divine guidance is the way of divine abundance. The way of divine guidance is the way of divine abundance. And the other blessings of God. And the way of assumption is the way of frustration. Everyone who moves just by assumption will never escape frustration. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. God gave Abraham guidance to go somewhere. And in, in Genesis chapter 13 verse 2, as Abraham followed the guidance of God, Abraham was blessed. In Genesis chapter 26 from verse 1 to 4, God spoke to Isaac when there was famine. He said, don't go into the land of the Philistines. Dwell in this land and I will bless you. 
Don't go into Egypt rather. And as Isaac hearkened to God, from verse 12 to verse 14, he sowed in the land. He received in the same year 100 foot and the Lord blessed him. As he followed the guidance of God, God blessed him. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 1 to 3. The Bible speaking said, Thus here the Lord is anointed to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holding, to subdue nations before him. I will lose the loins of kings. I will open before him the two leaf gates, and the gates shall not be shut. Then I will go before you. That is guidance. I will make the crooked places straight. That is guidance. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Then I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, I am the God of Israel. Guidance. In Isaiah chapter 48 verse 21, the Bible said, and they tested not when he led them. God cannot lead you and you are thirsty. And, he, and they thirsted not when he led them. Even though it was through the desert, they thirsted not. One of the greatest challenges we have in our generation is that everybody wants to do what everybody is doing. Everybody wants to put money in everywhere people are putting their monies. And then all of a sudden they get challenged. Listen. When you are guided, you can never be stranded. And when you are directed, you can never be frustrated. The guided are never stranded. The directed are never frustrated. And the reverse is true. Don't do something because that is what everybody is doing. Find out from your hearts of heart. Find out from God. Is this what you want me to do? I was talking with one of the, one of, a senior lawyer, a senior advocate of Nigeria some time ago. And he told me, he said, properties is not my own area. He said, I don't do properties at all. He said, my own is head-on litigation. That is what I, that is where I am. That is where I am blessed. I was moved. Because people think that until you are in the, in the city of Abuja or, or Lagos or Portacot, until you do certain things, you can never succeed. If you want the blessing of God, find out from God, what do you want me to do? Where do you have peace? What is the area of your strength? Anything that costs you your peace may cost you your life. Don't make a move when you have lost your peace. Don't take a step when you have lost your peace. Don't force yourself to do anything. Very, very important. The way of the blessing, first, is the way of righteous uprightness. Number two, is the way of divine guidance. Number three, is the way of absolute obedience. The way of absolute obedience. There is a connection between obedience and abundance. There is a, and there is a connection between disobedience and deprivation. There is a connection between obedience and abundance. And there is also a connection between disobedience and deprivation. I'm talking about obedience to God. Again, we saw in Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 to 3. When God spoke to Abraham, he moved. And God blessed Abraham. That was Genesis 12, 1 to 3 and Genesis 13 and in verse 2. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 to 2, God said, If you will hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, to observe, to do all the commandments which I will command you, the Lord will set, up, set you on high and all these blessings will come upon you. If you will hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, all these blessings will come upon you. In Luke chapter 5 verse 4 to 6, we saw how Peter heard the voice of Jesus. He said, Master, we have toiled all night, we caught nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when he let down the net, 
they enclose a great multitude of fishes and the net break. Obedience. The obedient will access peace like a river. Isaiah chapter 48 verse 18. He will access peace like a river. You see, if you have hearkened to my voice, your peace would have been like the river. And the disobedient would dwell in the dry land. Psalm 68 verse 6. God set the solitary in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. Somebody say amen. When God called us into ministry, myself and my wife, young medical doctors in our profession, we already had openings to go to the United Kingdom, um, University of London, and then the Hammersmith Hospital for both further study and practice. At that junction, I went to pray, and God gave me the direction for the ministry. When I told a man, an elderly man who is also a pastor, he told me, he said, well, you have an opening to London. And even if you say God wants you to do pastoring, it is better to pastor there than here. I told him, I said, no, that is not where God asked me to go. It is here, squarely in Nigeria. It didn't make sense then. But I followed that direction. And that has, is what has brought us here. Under this awe-inspiring edifice, there is nothing like this in London or in America or in Australia. Nothing. The path of divine direction is the path of total satisfaction. Don't do things because others want you to do it. Do things because that is what God wants you to do. Don't do things because someone feels like that is what you should do. This morning, the question somebody should be asking is, Lord, is there any area of my life where I am disobeying you? Show me, Lord, where I am in disobedience and I will do the right thing. So, we have the way of uprightness, the way of divine guidance, the way of absolute obedience. Number four is the way of giving Giving. And giving, I'm referring to being a blessing both to God and to man. Genesis 12, verse 2. God told Abraham, I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. That is, you are only going to be a blessing. You are only going to be blessed if you agree to be a blessing. A blessing to God. A blessing to man. When you refuse to exist as a blessing, you have refused to access the blessing. Acts chapter 20 verse 35. He said, I have showed you all things. How does soul laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. The giver is at a higher level than the receiver. The giver is always at a higher level. And giving to who? Giving to God. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 10, he said, bring all the tithes into my storehouse. That there may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And, you, and it shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. In Genesis chapter 14 verse 18 to 20, we saw how Abraham met Melchizedek and Abraham received the blessing from Melchizedek as he gave. 
I started giving tithes and offerings. About 33 years ago, young man in the high institution. I wasn't planning to be a pastor. I didn't, it didn't cross my mind to be a pastor. I wasn't planning to preach it. But out of 13 naira pocket money that I will be given by my father, I will give 3 naira out of it. I saw it in the Bible. And I saw the results of it in my life. And from then till eternity, I have never needed an encouragement from any mortal man to do so. Giving to God. And then secondly, is giving to the poor. To the poor and the less privileged. If you are a blessing to the less privileged, you can never escape the blessing. In Psalm 41 verse 1 to 2, the Bible said, Blessed is he that considereth the poor. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him. The Lord will keep him alive. He shall be blessed upon the earth. And God will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. What a blessing. Let me read it again. He said, blessed is he that considereth the poor. If he is inside trouble because of what he has done for the poor, I will pull him out of the trouble. The Lord will preserve him. The Lord will keep him alive. He shall be blessed upon the earth. And God will not hand him over to the expectations of his enemies. You know, we live in a world of very, very wicked and bitter people. Where people will all of, out of the blues be expecting you to just die suddenly or have a problem or have a challenge. He said, all I want you to do is consider the poor and I got your back covered. Consider the poor and leave your enemies in my hand. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 17. He said, he that has pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord and that which he has given will he pay him again. Somebody say amen. This is very, very exciting. Givers will never lack and eaters will keep looking for what to eat. It's a matter of choice. So the way of uprightness, the way of divine guidance, the way of absolute obedience, the way of giving. Number five, the way of submission to priestly authority. Submission to priestly authority. And when I say so, I'm talking about pastoral a prophetic authority, the way of submission to priestly authority. Priests are supernatural channels of the blessing. Channels. Numbers chapter 6 verse 23 to 27. He says, speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, on this wise shall the children of Israel Shall you, that's Aaron, bless the children of Israel, saying, The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And the Lord give you peace. Somebody say, Amen. amen. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 7. He said, Without all contradiction, the less is blessed. Of the better. That is God speaking about Melchizedek and Abraham. A priest or a prophet or someone who has a pastoral oil upon his life. He is a custodian of the blessing of God. When you, you release submission, you get transmission. Submission brings transmission. And the failure of submission is the failure of transmission. 
connection brings collection and association brings assimilation. Connection brings collection. Association brings assimilation. Let me illustrate this and tell you a story. We went to Lagos for a program at the indoor sports hall of the National Stadium. Dunamis Church in Lagos held the program. And after the program, um, it was, we ended in the middle of the night, around 12. The young man who drove me, drove me to the hotel where I was staying in Ikeja. And he was staying far away in Lekki. After dropping me, beyond Lekki actually, far away. After dropping me at the hotel, the protocol officer he told me, Sir, can I stay with you just for the night? If you can sleep in the, in the parlor, the living room of the chalet. And I told him he could go ahead. I slept in the bedroom. By around 2 a.m., just two and a half hours or two hours afterwards, this was what he told me in the morning. He said a giant came out of his body, tying towel. Giant walked out of his body. He looked up and was wondering, what am I seeing? Tall demonic giant with only towel, long cloth. And the giant walked and looked back and said, I am coming. And the man told me in the morning. And I told him that giant is coming nowhere. That was a demonic being that has been in your life all these years. That came into an anoint atmosphere. A Holy Ghost zone. Highly fireized, flammatized zone. And he could no longer survive in that environment. That giant is coming back nowhere. Somebody shout power. Take your seat. Four weeks later. They called him to Paracourt. He's a technical person. To fix a, pro a, a problem. That an expatriate white man couldn't fix. He's a school certificate holder. He traveled to Paracourt, fixed it. The people were shocked. They gave him a car for a reward. After a few more, one to three weeks, they shifted him and posted him from Lagos to Abuja as the Northern Regional Manager with his school certificate. Because there was an association that brought an assimilation. There was a submission that brought a transmission. Is God speaking to anybody at all? Whenever God has placed anybody over your life as priest or prophet, ensure you don't get too familiar. Familiarity over familiarity can destroy connectivity. It takes a sense of value. A sense of value for what that priest carry. For you to have a flow of virtue. One day our Bible school students were graduating. And my wife went there. We were there to just congratulate them for their graduation. And there she cited a young lady among them who was not well dressed. And she told her, I'm going to give you dress and give you shoe. The girl was very happy, woman rather. Unknown to her and to us. She had been trusting God for the fruit of the womb for nine years. So she carried the cloth. And she said, Lord, if the woman who gave me this cloth is barren, if she is barren, as I wear the cloth, may I remain barren. But if she is not barren, then this barrenness dies now. She fasted before she put her put on the cloth. Her father and mother were deep in the occult. They vowed she would never have a child. She wore that cloth with a sense of value. Bam! 
power hit her. Barrenness broke. Pregnancy exploded. And the rest of it is history. Someone is seated under this atmosphere this morning. I prophesy to you every testimony that is upon this altar that you have heard and you desire is released upon your life. Shout the loudest, Amen. Please take your seat. That was number five. We have two more, and then we shall be true. Number six is the way of praise and gratitude. Praise and gratitude. Appreciation brings elevation. Appreciation brings multiplication. In John chapter 6 verse 11, Jesus had five loaves and two fishes. And there were 5,000 men beside women and children. Instead of complaining and saying, what is this? The Bible said, he lifted up the loaves and gave thanks. And as he gave thanks, it multiplied. Appreciation brings elevation. Appreciation brings multiplication. In Psalm 67 verse 5 to 7, he said, let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. And all the ends of the earth shall fear him. To be grateful is to be great. And to grumble is to be grounded. When you run out of praise, you run out of your race. To be vibrant in gratitude is to be vibrant in the blessing. To grumble is to continue to struggle. I knew a man. This man is close to 50 now. He came to our house one day. And this my baby said, Daddy, I don't like this man. And why? The man doesn't smile at all. He's complaining about everything. Everybody is bad. Everything is bad. Everybody is bad. Everything is bad. He said, Daddy, I don't like this man. If you see him, you, you too will not like him. The man is almost 50 now. Nothing working. Unmarried. Stranded. Grounded. He suspects everybody. He complains about everybody. He complains about everything. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 10. He said, neither murmur ye as they murmur. And we are destroyed of the destroyer. You can enjoy where you are. On the way to where you are going. Did you hear what I just said? You can celebrate where you are on the way to where you are going. It is possible you have not reached there. But it is also true you have left here. Somebody say amen. amen. It is possible that there are people who are better than you. But the truth is you are better than more people. Than you can imagine. Hallelujah. Joel chapter 1 verse 11 and 12. Look at it. Very very graphic scripture. He said be ashamed. O ye husband men whole. O ye vine dressers. For the wheat and for the barley. Because the harvest of the field. Is perished. The vine is dried up. And the fig tree languishes. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered. Why? Because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Everything dries up around a joyless person. 
Hello? Everything dries up. All the trees of the field have dried because joy has dried. And joy is not a gift, it's a choice. You don't have the gift to be happy, you make the choice. I will rejoice in the Lord my God. Even if the fig tree fail to blossom. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 and 18. If there is no the labor of the olive part, perish, yet I will rejoice. Philippians chapter 4 verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord your God. And again I say unto you rejoice. It didn't say rejoice in the car that you have. It didn't say rejoice in the husband that you have. It didn't say rejoice that you got a promotion. Rejoice in the Lord your God. The Lord your God is enough reason to rejoice. Somebody say amen. Somebody say a louder amen. Somebody say a louder amen. amen. Did, is God speaking to anybody at all? No matter how bad it is, it is not totally bad. You are angry that somebody hit your car and broke the windscreen. Would you have been happier if they broke your leg? You are angry. Like at this age, you are not yet married. Well, you can. But there are some of your mates who are also not married and they don't have a job. No source of livelihood. And then there are some who are in psychiatry home. There are some battling for life. There are some who are not alive at all. They are in the cemetery or in the mortuary. And there is nobody in the mortuary that has a prayer request. None. There's nobody in the cymmetry that they say, what is your prayer request? They say, I need a life partner. The Bible said to him that is joined to the living, there is hope. A living dog is better than a dead lion. The dog that is alive is better than the lion that has died. The lion is powerful, but is he still alive? Hello? A living taxi driver is better than a dead property owner. A living tenant is better than a dead landlord. The critical thing is that you have life. And if you have life, your potential is endless. Your potentials are endless. Somebody shout the loudest, Amen. There are those who are upright. They don't lie, they don't steal, they don't smoke, they don't drink, they don't womanize, they don't manize. They give. They do all these things, but you will never catch a smile on their face. Can't, can't. They have nothing to be happy about. So it is like plus one, minus one. The answer is what? Zero. One leg forward, another leg backward. Your, 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 your joylessness destroyed the impact of your giving. So you make the choice. It is not a gift. It is a choice. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say the loudest amen. Take your seat. As I round off, did anybody get anything so far? And number seven, which is the final. Let's go through what we have said. Number one is the way of uprightness. Number two is the way of divine guidance. Number three is the way of absolute obedience. Number four is the way of giving, being a blessing. Number five is the way of submission to priestly authority. 
Number six is the way of praise and gratitude. And number seven is the way of scriptural light. Scriptural light. Revelational light. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 21 says, 29, 29 said, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children. The things that are revealed out of scripture. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 said, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And because of this light that has come, he enumerates a lot of things that will come to you because of the light. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 17, after Peter revealed who Jesus was, Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you, but my Father, which is in heaven. What does that mean? First, that, Revelation leads to possession. And light brings a lift. Revelation leads to possession. And light brings the lift. What is not revealed to you from the word of God can never be released to you. When you are not lighted, you can never be lifted. Secondly, what you see out of the word of God determines what you will see out of life. Anything you are able to see from this Bible, God will make you see it out of life. From the Bible, I saw all manner of possibilities. I saw possibilities of healings and deliverances. I saw possibilities of supernatural supplies. Hence, this construction went on at the time of one of the worst recessions in this country. Millions being spent every month. Laborers being paid. Without the church being under pressure. We didn't have a second offering basket. This is the first offering for normal Sunday. This is the second offering for the project. We didn't have. And God did it supernaturally. Because we saw it out of scripture. One day I was standing on the first gallery there during the construction. And then the wall. I looked up, looked everywhere. saw massive work going on. Thousands of people at work. Finances. And then I received that song. He owns the universe. You own the silver and gold. The earth and all its fullness. It all belongs to you. There's nothing you don't have. There's nothing you can give love. The hope of all the living. The source. Yes, you are. You are, you are, you are. Oh, you are the rose. Of Sharon, the lily of the vine, you are the bright, and yes, you are, you are. I saw that he owned the universe. He owned the silver and the gold. All we needed was just a little piece of the gold. A little piece of the silver. And that will finish the project. What we see out of the book determines what we see out of life. Peter became blessed because he saw something. What is my conclusion this morning? The way you follow determines the place you will end. Any way you follow determines where you end. It is not possible 
to follow the wrong way and end in the right place. If we want to end in the realm of the blessing, we must follow the way of the blessing. And let me say this, I promise to tell you that the blessing, when we say blessing, people think riches, money is more than that. Let me enumerate about seven or eight things that a blessing means and just one, two, three, four, five. Number one is divine peace and tranquility. That is the meaning of the blessing, number one. Divine peace and tranquility. Proverbs 10, 22 says, the blessing of the Lord, he make it rich and added no sorrow. There are people who have money, but they don't have peace. They can't sleep at night. It's divine peace and tranquility. Number two is divine protection. Job chapter 1 verse 10 and Isaiah chapter 65 verse 8. It shows us that wherever there is the blessing, destruction can't happen. God will not give you money that will make robbers to waste your life before your time. He won't give you a position that will make witches to kill you before your time. The blessing implies divine peace and tranquility, divine protection. Number three, divine health and vitality. We saw that in Psalm 41 verse 1 to 3 and 3 John verse 2. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. It, it is divine health and vitality. When God blesses you, he gives you health. Number four is generational greatness. You don't have, you don't have useless children. Psalm 112 and in verse 1 to 3, he said, Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandments. His children shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. You are not permitted to be blessed of God. And then have one as an arm robber, another as a prostitute, another as a drug addict. God forbid. I prophesy to every, every parent here, every wayward child, and every child that is trying to miss road, today I declare they are arrested. generational greatness. Number five is transgenerational transfer. That is, when God has blessed you, it does not finish in your lifetime. Your children will transmit the same to the next generation. It cannot finish in your last time. Lifetime. We saw that also Genesis chapter 26 verse 3. Genesis chapter 22 verse 25. Sorry, 22 verse 15 to 17. Number six is divine wisdom. The blessing of God comes with wisdom. Strategic ideas. Problem solving. Capacity to tackle naughty issues. To be blessed is to be wise. Number seven is divine favor. When God gives you the blessing, doors open where you didn't knock. Psalm 5 verse People like you before they know who you are. They accept you from afar. And number eight is divine strength and energy. No laziness. No lethargy. Energy. Psalm 29 verse 11. Genesis 14 verse 14. When you are blessed. Hallelujah. If you have a lot of money and you are weak and you are tired and you are bankrupt of wisdom and you are tormented with demons and you have children that are useless and your life is filled with sorrow, you cannot sleep at night. That is not a blessing. It is a cost, a cost man with some money. Because you can, you can have money and be very cost. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. But when the blessing is upon your life, all these things will follow you. Is there somebody ready for the blessing this morning? If you are that one, shout the loudest. Amen.
Shout amen at the top of your voice. A louder believers, amen. I'm going to pray a prayer of surrender. Then I'll pray a prayer for the legal profession. Then we'll pray the prayer for impartation. Anybody brought what you want God to impart for you today? If you didn't bring, you will lift your hand and that will suffice. Take your seat. Take your seat. Lift up your right hand everywhere you are. Thank the Lord for what you have received.